there are five things I wish I had known before I became a software developer, and I'm going to let you in on them. Hey guys, Rocket here. If you haven't already liked and subscribed to War on Air, make sure that you go ahead and do that, and that way you stay up to date for everything that we put out. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. The number one thing that I wish I had known before I became a software developer is continuous learning. Hands down, if I had known that I was going to have to learn something new every day, I may have not done it. Honestly, I may have not done it. Um, I think that now that I am here, though, I enjoy every minute of it. Um, it is well worth the effort that you put in basically every day as a software developer to learn something new and to always go back and learn things that you've already learned as uh, a lot of us do, whether that's Stack Overflow or now it's ChatGBT, whatever tools that you use and even Google, right, is always out there as well. All of those tools you are accessing every day on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, one time I went ahead and looked at my Google search history when I was just like I would say intermediate. I wasn't quite full stack yet, but I went and looked at my search history and in a normal day, I would search Google probably around 400 times. It was between 300 and like 450. And that's how many Google searches I do in an eight hour period on developing software when I was just starting to learn. So if it seems daunting and it seems like it's a lot of knowledge, it absolutely is a lot of knowledge and it always is a lot of knowledge. I mean, I'm a cloud architect and a full stack developer, but if you put me in front of a framework that I don't know, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Google and try to learn everything I can about it. All of its quirks, all of its features, everything that I need to know about a certain framework or even a certain language that I may not know about. So always remember that if you want to be a software developer and you're just starting on this journey and it feels overwhelming, it never stops feeling overwhelming if you're always learning new things, which will make you a great software developer. Number two, problem solving skills. You have to have problem solving skills to be a software developer. If you don't have the right mindset, then it becomes infinitely harder to get your job done. So if you don't like puzzles and you don't like challenging video games and you don't like trying the same thing five different ways to see if it will eventually work out for you, then software development's probably not for you, just in all honesty. You have to be able to sit down and just continue to try with the little thought in the back of your mind saying, it's going to work eventually. I'm going to figure this out. And Every single time that you do it, I promise you, every single time that you sit down and spend enough hours doing it, it'll work itself out. But it takes that dedication and it takes that critical thinking to be able to say, well, this little piece worked, but this little piece didn't. And these three things worked, but this array isn't really working in what I wanted to do. So we're going to remove this and we're going to put this in a different place. Like you're doing this on a daily basis of trying to organize and reorganize and construct new things from nothing from literally nothing you are building something and that is the cool thing about software development but you have to have the critical thinking skills to be able to do this Number three, collaboration and communication. Just as easy as I'm talking to you right now, you as a new software developer have to be able to talk to your senior developers, your managers, and your other peers about the problems that you're having. If you are just starting out in software development, I talked about this on a previous episode, but you need to go to a software development meetup so that way you can meet other developers. You have to have communication within your own new sphere of influence, and that way you can learn new things that you probably would would never look at on your own. For example, I don't usually touch JavaScript. I just don't usually touch it. I'm primarily a back-end developer and a cloud architect, so I'm not really doing much on the front end. But my one of my best friends is a front-end developer, and he shows me new things all the time that I would never know. And it gets gives me new ideas to think about different ways that I can implement these kind of strategies and these kind of you know functions and the way that these things process in my own code. Even if it's not comparable and it's not front end or back end, the way that he writes things is different than the way that I write things. But sometimes he's able to solve things faster. And sometimes I'm able to solve things faster, just depending on the way that we think about things. And that's why it's so, so important 
to meet up with other software developers and to communicate between each other. You have to have this communication to be successful. And this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest separators between a good developer and a great developer. Because great developers not only have the critical thinking skills, they not only have the ability to learn something new every day, but they also communicate what they learn every day. And they're constantly not just trying to learn on their own, but they're trying to learn from other people around them. Number four, version control systems are one of the most important things to know when you are a software developer, whether it's GitHub or Bitbucket or something else that even I've never heard of. The version control system is one of the most important things to know as a software developer. You have to know how to push code up from your local machine to a cloud repository and then build whether that's a pipeline, whether that's you as a software developer, pitching in on the DevOps side or it's someone completely different, how to take things out of that repository and push them to a production code, whether there's build tests involved or anything else, that's for a later episode to talk about. But what you really need to know is just the simple process of how you can write code and then you can push it up to a cloud repository and then you can pull it down to production or to a staging or development environment. So if you have not started coding yet, learn how repositories work and learn how continuous development works and continuous version control works uh, or you know as we call it CICD so learn how this works that way you know how to push up code correctly and so you don't lose things this is a really big reason why you should learn how to do it because if your computer craps out you lose all your code if you don't have it saved somewhere else. And yes, we have the cloud today, but learning how to use a CI CD pipeline and CI CD integration is the most important thing for a developer. And I wish that I had learned it earlier than when I did, because my company when I first started writing code for, they didn't use it. And I really didn't know what it was until I got into a full blown production environment that was using it so heavily that I had to spend, you know, a month getting caught up on a, how all this, these things work, what the, all these keywords are. So go do yourself a favor, go learn how CI CD works and then start coding. Number five, the very last thing that I will recommend to everyone that I wish that I had known a little bit sooner is professionalism. And I know that this sounds like a crazy thing to have when you are a software developer, because more than likely when you're first starting out, you're going to be stuck in a room full of people who don't want to talk to you. And they're just going to have their headphones in. And you're like, why do I have to worry about being professional? Most of these guys are wearing hoodies anyway. Well, let me tell you why. Because you may not always want to be a software developer. And you may want to befriend like your manager and your manager's manager. And you could do what I did, which is rely on your management to like you. And then they will put you up for promotion before anyone else because they see your character. They see your personality. And if you have an outgoing personality, then it exposes you to all these new opportunities that you don't get just for staying quiet and doing your code. If people don't know you, then they don't want to promote you. Just like how if I don't know you as my neighbor, I'm not going to go ask you for favors, right? Unless it's an emergency, I'm not going to ask you for favors. You know, it, it's the same exact thing uh, with the professionalism side of software development. So you have to, and I know I'm kind of leaning more on just being outgoing, but, you know, showing up as your best every day, not just coming to work and talking about gossip and everything else. You show up and do your job to the best of your ability and you also show that you can be in a higher position and you will get there is the point I'm trying to make because I did it and I could tell you that you can do it too. You just have to think at the same time while I'm learning all of these things and at the same time that I'm, you know, trying to position myself in a place where I can collaborate with other people. I also need to be thinking to myself, these people can also potentially recommend me to go higher up either at this company or at another company if they eventually leave and I follow them. Building the connections and having the professionalism between each other is extremely important in software development. And so I highly recommend that you think about that when you are in the office and you are writing code and you are communicating with your other you know, peers and your management. So there you have it. Those are the five different things that I would recommend that you learn because I wish I had learned them sooner being a software developer. So 
remember these things, hold on to these, and try to apply them if you already are in software development. And if you are not, then remember them because you will absolutely need them if you want to rise quickly in the software development world or just in the IT world in general. The All of these things apply to people that are just in IT and even outside of IT, most of these things apply. But I would definitely say that remembering to think critically, don't give up, focus on your version control, and be professional are definitely the things that I would want to see everyone that is around me do because then we all rise together. All right, guys. Well, until next time, I hope you have a great day. And if you haven't, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.